What is nuclear energy? Well, for starters, it's not a new technology. It's been around since before the 1970s. You know, back when everybody looked like this. Nuclear energy is possibly one of humanity's most untapped potentials in terms of technology, yet also one of the most lethal. Today, I'm going to talk to you about the pros and cons of nuclear energy, give you a little taste of my personal opinion on the topic, as well as the opinion of the Catholic Church. I believe everyone should be informed about technology such as nuclear energy, as it can make or break society as we know it. Let's start off on a positive note with the pros of nuclear energy. Don't worry, we'll get to the heavy stuff soon enough. First off, nuclear energy is really good for the environment. Okay, not really good, but compared to what fossil fuels are doing to our planet, nuclear energy is looking real good right now. This is mostly because of the relatively small amount of waste nuclear power plants pump into the air. Of course, there is a ton of radioactive nuclear waste that nuclear power plants produce that usually gets put in containers and stored far underground, and while that might not seem like a particularly bright idea, it's better than pumping it back into the atmosphere like most fossil fuel plants do. It also has saved many lives. Kind of. According to a 2013 NASA study, an estimated 1.8 million deaths have been prevented since 1976 due to the use of nuclear energy. This is mostly because any reduction to the amount of fossil fuels in the air immediately lowers a person's risk to lung or heart diseases due to pollution. It also causes the least deaths per unit of energy per year in its field, with fossil fuels as the leading energy-related cause of death. So, sure, it might not damage people as badly as our current energy options, but there are tons of people who are very against nuclear energy. One of their main arguing points is that most nuclear power innovations have been put on hold since the mid to late 1900s. This means that most of the technology is outdated and certainly not fit to function positively in this day and age. Plus, many say that this lull in the exploration and innovation when it comes to nuclear energy proves that the world does not want nuclear energy. But, supporters will say that while outdated technology is not as effective, if exploration of the topic continues, it is highly likely that they would be able to fix a lot of the problems that nuclear reactors currently have. Their most reasonable proposal is the thurium reactor. Currently, most nuclear power plants function with the help of a plutonium reactor. Plutonium is also one of the key aspects of current nuclear energy. And while this does its job, it is one of the things that makes both nuclear weapons and nuclear waste so dangerous. In fact, just one milligram of plutonium could kill you. By using a thorium reactor, the risk would be avoided, as thorium is sufficiently less dangerous. The waste products would still, hypothetically, have radioactivity, but it would dissipate after a couple hundred years. Though this may not sound good, that's because you didn't know that the current plutonium-infused nuclear waste takes tens of thousands of years to dissipate in terms of radioactivity. Thurium would be a wonderful alternative. Unfortunately, due to most countries' hesitance to meddle with anything concerning nuclear energy, no one has really been able to test this. However, this hesitance is completely justified. How? Well, let me tell you some of the cons, the bad things about nuclear energy. First, let me say this. Chalk River, Kishtim, Sela Field, Lukens, Three Mile Island, Chernobyl, Fukushima. Sound like a bunch of random gibberish? Well, it's not. What I just said was a list of the seven major nuclear disasters that have happened around the world in the past 50 years. Though three of these ordeals were fairly self-contained, the other four actually rendered entire parts of countries unfit for human inhabitants. The most recent nuclear emergency was Fukushima. More formally known as the Fukushima Daiichi disaster, it happened on March 16, 2011. There was an energy accident at the Fukushima nuclear power plant. No one died from the major radiation leak, though 37 people were injured and two workers were hospitalized due to radiation burns. The outcome of this accident was a rise in thyroid cancer among the people living near the power plant of Okuma, Japan, as well as a general readdressing of the issue of nuclear energy, to which most of the world showed general dissent on any encouragement of nuclear energy. Another issue with nuclear energy is nuclear power plant waste and pollution. Like I mentioned earlier, it is healthier for the environment, but only in comparison to fossil fuels. The amount of waste is not the issue, but it is the dangerous properties of the said waste that make it such a concern. All waste from nuclear power plants is radioactive and contains plutonium, which, like I said before, is a large threat to us for, as humans. For one, 
Just a milligram of plutonium could kill a human being, and a kilogram is all you need to make an atomic bomb. Atomic bombs, of course, and general weaponization is the most concerning part of nuclear energy. Though there are a total of 439 nuclear reactors in 31 countries, most of them were built under the presumption that they were going to be used for energy production and not for weapons. Sadly, in just under 40 years, five countries have developed their weapons using nuclear energy. So it is difficult to tell when a country intends to create nuclear weapons and when it is intending to use nuclear power plants for what they were originally intended for, to power things. You'll be glad to know that America is one of 190 parties to have the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Act, which is part of the Treaty of Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons that was created in 1968. The only parties that did not sign this treaty include India, Israel, North Korea, Pakistan, and South Sudan. The Nuclear Non-Proliferation Act aims for, and I quote, more effective international controls over the transfer and use of nuclear materials, equipment, and nuclear technology for peaceful purposes to prevent proliferation. Proliferation, by the way, means rapid increase in numbers and can be exemplified by the nuclear energy craze of the 1980s, during which a sum total of 218 nuclear energy reactors were created. Luckily, that time has passed and we are in a present that attempts to revolve around the fair discussion of any issue. In the context of this, nuclear energy can be an extremely controversial talking point. If you are to look at it morally and ethically, it doesn't seem to be hurting many people yet and could provide better electrical opportunities for many places in the world. But one of the byproducts of nuclear energy is the creation of very powerful nuclear weapons. And for this reason and this alone, it is hard to agree with nuclear energy from a moral standpoint. This is also the stance that I take as an individual concerning nuclear energy. I Though think the risks I am for outweigh the, the research of nuclear energy. I think that until we know for certain that we can control the effects of, nuclear, of a nuclear reactor and what people use them for, it is not a good idea to encourage the use of nuclear energy or nuclear power plants. The Catholic Church stands pretty near to the same beliefs that I have, in the way that the Church, by declaration of Pope Francis, does not support nuclear energy. Pope Francis expressed this distaste for nuclear energy at a meeting with many Japanese bishops who were discussing the lasting effects of the Fukushima incident. He said to them on March 22nd in 2015, Human beings should not break the natural laws set by God when he was asked about nuclear energy. He also called nuclear energy the world's modern day Tower of Babel. The Tower of Babel, for reference, is part of a biblical story where many people try to build a tower in order to reach the heavens, hence obtaining an equal status with God. However, the people in their attempts anchored God and triggered their own destruction. Francis fears the same thing will happen to us. He addressed it again in his encyclical entitled On the Care for Our Common Home, in which he reminds Catholics and all inhabitants of the world that we should take care of our planet and enter into an honest dialogue as a whole about what is best for us and the world we live in. This is the same kind of dialogue that I hope to pursue with this video. So decide for yourself. Should we find ways to improve the world by going on the path less traveled, the path of improvement through nuclear energy? Or should we set aside nuclear energy and focus on improving our world in more concrete ways, like reducing our carbon footprint? I've given you the pros and cons, my own opinion, and even the Pope's, but the decision is up to you. What will you choose?